Well, guys, we're Mr. Dan Tamarine Mellon. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, September 15th, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. Now, time to die star Rami Malik is introducing the unsettling villain he plays in the new movie. The 39-year-old Oscar-winning actor shared details about his character, Safin, in a preview for the James Bond film released Monday. The teaser featured a clip from No Time to Die that shows Safin, played by Malik, presenting Dr. Madeline Swan, played by Leah Zido, with a broken mask. Swan tells Bond, played by Daniel Craig, that Safin is seeking revenge. Malik said in the preview, What I really wanted from Safin was to make him unsettling, thinking of himself as being heroic. Uh, director Carrie Joey Fukunawa added, What he wants and what he's willing to do makes him a very frightening character, both personally to Bond, but also on a global level. In another scene from the film, Safin compares himself to Bond. The character says, We both eradicate people to make the world a better place. I just want to be a little tidier. Malik said Safin will prove, quote, a formidable adversary to Bond who must adapt to the villain. No Time to Die marks Craig's fifth and final film as Bond. The movie follows Bond as he attempts to rescue a kidnapped scientist and investigate Safin, a mysterious villain armed with a dangerous new technology. Lashana Lynch co-stars as Naomi, with Ben Whishaw as Q, Naomi Harris as Eve Moneypenny, Jeffrey Wright as Felix Leiter, Christoph Waltz as Ernest Stravso Bloomfield, Ralph Fiennes as M, and Anna de Amros as Paloma. No Time to Die opens in theaters November 20th. A new trailer released this month shows Bond teaming up with Paloma while on a mission. Netflix has acquired the worldwide rights to the romantic drama Malcolm and Marie, starring Zendaya and John David Washington. Before our creator Sam Levinson wrote, directed, and produced Malcolm and Marie, which follows a filmmaker played by Washington and his girlfriend played by Zendaya returning home after a movie preview. The couple will have the strength of their loves tested after revelations about their relationship surface. The film was shot in black and white between June 17th and July 2nd at Feldman Architecture's Caterpillar House in Carmel, California under COVID-19 safety protocols. Zendaya and Washington also serve as executive producers. The cast and crew of Malcolm and Marie will share a portion of the proceeds with Feeding America. Levinson said in a statement, I am so grateful to this cast and crew, many of whom are my Euphoria family, for coming together during such uncertain times. We felt privileged to be able to make this film together, and we did so with a lot of love. We are thrilled that it's ended up with Netflix, which is unparalleled in allowing filmmakers the freedom to tell st- their stories that reach audiences all over the world. Washington last starred in Tenet, which was the number one movie in North America for the second weekend. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new film, The Trial of the Chicago 7. The streaming service shared a teaser trailer for the movie Monday featuring Sasha Baron Cohen as Abby Hoffman, the political and social activist who co-founded the Youth International Party. The new movie centers on The Trial of the Chicago 7, a group of seven defendants charged with conspiracy and inciting the riot for their role in protest during the 1968 Democratic National Convention in Chicago, Illinois. The Chicago 7 were Hoffman, played by Baron Strong, uh, uh, Baron Cohen, um, Jerry Rubin, played by Jeremy Strong, David Dillinger, played by John Carroll Lynch, Tom Hyden, played by Eddie Remain, Renee Davis, played by Alex Sharp, John Froines, played by Daniel Flattery, and Lee Weiner, played by Noah Robbins. Bobby Seale, played by Yaha Abdul Mateen II, was initially charged but was later severed from the case. In the preview, protesters are seen facing police while chanting, The whole world is watching. Hoffman is also seen facing off in court with Richard Schultz, played by Joseph Gordon-Lovett, one of the federal prosecutors. Uh, Schultz uh, asked Hoffman, when you came to Chicago, were you hoped to draw the police into a confrontation? Hoffman uh, replies, won't you give me a moment, friend? I've never been on trial for my thoughts before. The trial of the Chicago 7 is written and directed by Aaron Sorkin and co-stars Michael Keaton, Frank Langella, and Mark Raylands. 
The film opens in selected theaters and premieres on Netflix on October 16th. Author Rick Riordan's The King Chronicles series is being adapted into films by Netflix, the writer has confirmed. Riordan said in an Instagram video posted Sunday, Hey everybody, want some, some exciting news? We're developing The King uh, Chronicles as featured films for Netflix. Yes, more news later. Reardon spoke about the films further on his blog, noting that he has been working on the deal with Netflix since October. The Kane Chronicles spawned three books, including 2010's The Red Pyramid, 2011's The Thorn of Fire, and 2012's The Serpent Shadows. Reardon, best known for his Percy Jackson fantasy novels, also has a deal with Disney Plus to adapt the television series based on Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson was previously adapted into two films, 2010's Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief, and its 2013 sequel, Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Reardon said in June that he does not like the film adaptation, but has high hopes for the Disney Plus series. Reardon said, to you guys, it's a couple of hours of entertainment. To me, it's my life's work going through a meat grinder when I plead with them not to do it. So yeah, but it's fine. All fine. We're going to fix it soon. True writers trade scary stories in the dark in the first trailer for Scare Me, a new horror film coming to Shudder on October 1st. Writer and director Josh Rubin from College Humor fame stars as Fred, a copywriter who visits a winter cabin to write his first novel. Fred meets successful horror author Fanny, portrayed by Aya Cash from The Boys. Fanny tells Fred and challenges him to tell a scary story during a power outage. She also invites a horror fan, played by Chris Redd, to join them. Fred, as the story continues to escalate, realizes that he's out of his league against Fanny. The synopsis reads, The more Fanny and Fred commit to their tales, the more the stories come to life in the dark of a Catskills cabin. The horrors of reality manifest when Fred confronts his ultimate fear. Fanny is the better storyteller. Shudder from AMC Networks is a streaming service for horror fans. Uh, since Creek alum James Vanderby and former The View co-host Sherry Shepard will appear in a new episode of Match Game. ABC said in a press release Monday that the episode will air October 1st at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Match Game is a revival of the NBC game that, that show that premiered in 1962. The game features four contestants as they attempt to match the answers of six celebrities in a game of fill in the blank. The October 1st celebrity panel will include actors James Vanderby, Cheryl Hines, Thomas Lennon, and Laura Benatti and television personalities Const uh, uh, Sherry Shepard and Dr. Oz. Contestant Sherry Palmer of Dallas, Texas, Victor Velez of Jersey City, New Jersey, uh, Shannon Hayes of Mount Airy, North Carolina, and Lizzie Harmon of Chicago, Illinois will compete for the $25,000 during the episode. The match game is hosted by Alec Baldwin, who also ex co-executive produces the series with Scott St. John, Mallory Schwartz, and Jennifer Mullen. Match Game is in its fifth season and will return to television on September 24th. And speaking about Dr. Oz, the Dr. Oz show has been renewed for season 13 and 14. Fox Station Group has announced the daytime talk show will remain on the air through the 2022-2023 season. Dr. Oz said in a statement, I'm honored to have our long-term partners continue to support our mission to keep America healthy while providing content and analysis of complicated information in this unprecedented time. John Weiser, the president of First Run Television at Sony Pictures Television, said in a statement, Fox Television stations renewing the Dr. Oz show for seasons 13 and 14 underscores on the ongoing value that the show delivers from the local broadcast stations. Dr. Oz is the hardest working talent in daytime television. The renewal comes as season 12 of the Dr. Oz show is set to premiere on Monday. The new season will, in, will introduce an all new studio. Dr. Oz will be tackling COVID-19 pandemics in the new season and will speak with members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force along with stars Paris Hilton, Tyra Banks, Dr. Pimple Popper, Tyra Myrie, uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter, Savannah Guthrie, and Sterling K. Brown. Tara Banks says that she's so excited for the Dancing with the Stars season 29 premiere. The 46-year-old model and actress who was named the new host of Dancing with the Stars in July 
and returning Judge Boutelini teased a new season during Monday's episode of Good Morning America. Banks said in a via remote video, I'm so excited, I'm also freaking out because live television. You don't know what the uh, fuck is going on. The season 29 premiere will air live on the from the Dancing with the Stars set, but won't feature any live audience due to the coronavirus pandemic. Tolini said the series will instead show projected images on large panels. Tolini says it's going to be fantastic. The set will literally transform with every performance. Banks added, I'm going to need all of you at home tweeting, texting friends, creating the atmosphere and that energy in the country so I can feel it and give it right back to everybody through that TV lens. Banks says that she will make her debut as host in a larger-than-life dress. She says it is a dress that would probably take like three people to carry it. It's a lot. I have not done my final practice in it to see how I'm going to walk down stairs and strut. Banks said her job to act as a cheerleader for the contestants. Season 29 pros includes Artem Chignestov, Valtteri Meninsky, and Jenna Johnson, while Nelly, Carol Baskin, and Johnny Weir are among the celebrity contestants. Season 29 will, uh, will premiere on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ABC. Tanini, Carolina Naba, and former Dance with the Stars pro Tara Cuff will serve as the judges. For the first dates, star Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler are revisiting the 2004 movie in 2020. The 45 year old actress and 54 year old actor reprised their characters, Lucy Whitmore and Henry Roth, during a segment for the Drew Barrymore show premiering Monday. 51st Dates uh, follows the romance between Lucy, played by Barrymore, who a woman who suffers from anterograde amnesia after a car crash, and Henry Roth, a womanizing veterinarian. The pair fall in love and marry, with Henry making tapes for Lucy to remind her of their memories together. On the Drew Barrymore show, Barrymore and Sandler reunited to create a new tape for Lucy. Uh, Sandler says this, Henry, Hi Lucy, good morning, it's me Henry. We are on, I think, our 5,000 day together, and it's been great. I want to catch you up. He adds, You have a thing called amnesia, and I am your husband. We have a daughter, and she's about 40 now, or something like that. Henry then updates Lucy on the events of 2020. Sandler says, it's 2020. We're all still in the middle of a pandemic, which is a terrible thing. Baseball games are now being played in front of cardboard people. Um, he adds, before Alan Covet interrupts the pair as his character, 10 second time. I could honestly, uh, couldn't honestly be more excited for you. You have your own show now. Barrymore launched a digital series prior to the Drew Barrymore show premiere. In one segment, the art of, of the interview, Barry Moore spoke with Whoopi Goldberg this month about how they bonded on the set of the 1985 film Boys on the, uh, Boys on the Side. Sandler will star in the new Netflix movie, Hubby Halloween. The streaming service shared a trailer for the comedy last week. The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse, a new series of animated shorts, is coming to Disney Plus in November. The streaming service said in a press release Monday that the show will premiere November 18th on Mickey Mouse's birthday. The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse features classic art inspired by previous Mickey Mouse shorts. Each episode runs seven minutes and features new comedy, settings, stories, and music. The series follows Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, Goofy, and Pluto on their greatest adventure yet. The episodes will include stories inspired by lands at Disney parks and cameos by Disney characters. The Mickey Mouse shorts premiered on the, Nef on the Disney Channel in 2013 and aired for five seasons. The series features a contemporary art style inspired by Mickey Mouse's 1928 beginnings. Following the wonderful world of Mickey Mouse premiere, two new shorts will be released every Friday. Ten shorts in total will air in 2020 and ten more following in the summer. Paul Ruddish serves as an executive producer and supervising director on the new series, which features um, music from Mickey Mouse Shorts composer Christopher Willis. Blue Bloods alum Jennifer Esposito is a married woman. The 46-year-old actress married fitness trainer Jesper Vesterstrom at a beach wedding over the weekend. Esposito shared a slideshow of photos Sunday on Instagram, including pictures of herself and Vesta Strom on the beach with their officiant and showing off their wedding rings after the ceremony. 
as we see his former Blue Bloods co-star Amy Carlson, RuPaul Drag Race judge um, Michelle Visage, and actors Brenda Strong were among those to congratulate the couples in the comments. Uh, Vesta Strom posted photos of his own on his own account. He wrote alongside a diamond ring and hearts emoji. Hashtag love. Hashtag forever. As Basile was previously married to actor Bradley Cooper and model Louis Dowler. As Basile plays Detective Jack D. Uh, Cordolota in the first three seasons of Blue Bloods. She portrays Susan Rayner on the Amazon series The Boys, which premiered its second season this month. Giancarlo Esposito, who plays Stan Edgar on The Boys, said in a recent interview with UPI that season two will blow your minds. The 94th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will be held virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio announced Monday. De Blasio said that the live parade will occur this year, but that a reimagined parade will be created to watch the, on television and online. De Blasio says Macy is reinventing the event for this moment in history, and you'll be able to feel the spirit and the joy of that day. The TV broadcast-only parade will be filmed over two days and have about 25% of the usual number of participants, Macy said Monday. Macy said in a press release following the success of the summer's reimagining Macy's 4th of July fireworks show, the Macy's team meticulously reviewed every area of the Thanksgiving Day playbook to put in place enhanced health and safety practices that align with the CDC guidelines as well as local and state government protocols. Instead of the parade's usual two and a half mile route, the floats, balloons, and musicians will stay on the street surrounded by um, Herald Square, the department's uh, store. Signature giant helium balloons will be affixed uh, to special trucks for the event. High school marching bands participants must be at least 18 years old to participate. The parade's organizers said participants will wear masks and uh, observe social distancing. The 94th Annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will be broadcast on NBC on November 26th from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Standard Time. Rachel Ray appeared on Good Morning America Monday to discuss the fire that destroyed her New York City home in August or rather New York home in August. The celebrity chef's home in Lake Lurinance, north of Albany, caught fire due to an animal being burled inside her chimney. Ray, her husband, John Cusmano, uh, Ray's mom, and the couple's dog made it out okay. Ray said that she was aware that the roof was on fire uh, from a stranger who was riding at ATV near her backyard. Uh, Ray says, by the time I had gone upstairs to determine what could, uh, what we could save, I could hear the fire crackling through the walls and spreading through the building. And because of my work with the Dennis Leary Firefighter Foundation and the training I've done over several years with actual first responders, I knew to leave immediately. She continued, I, I just can't tell you how important it is to listen to your first responders. Ray says that she had previously bought a property across the street uh, for friends to use as a guest house that she is now using. Uh, Ray says, we've learned nothing but gratitude. We see our fellow Americans suffering out west, these horrible wildfires, and they don't have a place to go. Uh, express how grateful she is to still have a bed and a roof over her head. Alicia Keys announced on Twitter Monday that she will be releasing her previously delayed seventh studio album to Alicia on Friday. The singer made the announcement alongside a video of fans asking her when the album will be released. Alicia will be available on music streaming services such as Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music. Keys delayed Alicia back in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The album, which follows the 2016 Here, will feature singles Show Me Love, Underdog, and Perfect Way to Die which tackles police violence. Keys and her husband, Swift Speed, celebrated 10 years of marriage in August with a family vacation in the desert. The couple married in July 2010 and shared two sons, Egypt Dow 9 and Genesis Ali 5. And finally, Keith Urban and Pink will perform their new song for the first time on television at the 2020 Academy of Country Music Awards. 
Urban said Monday that he and Pink will perform One Too Many during the award show Wednesday, hours before the song's official release. Urban wrote, uh, Wednesday, One Too Many song available everywhere at midnight, world television premiere on the ACM Awards at 8 p.m. One Too Many appears on Urban's forthcoming 11 studio album, The Speed of Now Part 1. The album also features the singles We Were and God Whispered Your Name. Urban released a music video for God Whispered Your Name in April. Urban will release The Speed of Now Part 1 on Wednesday. On Monday, the ACM Awards also announced that Entertainer of the Year nominees uh, Luke Bryan, Eric Church, Luke Combs, Thomas Redd, and Carrie Underwood will perform a melody of their hits during the awards show. In addition, Taylor Swift will perform her song Betty during the ceremony. Uh, the, first, the performance will mark Swift's first at the ACM Awards in seven years. Celebrity couple Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani will also perform. The ACM Awards will air live from Nashville, Tennessee, Wednesday, beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on CBS. Rhett and Mayor Morris lead the list of nominees with five nominations each. And as you entertainment report for Tuesday, September 15, 2020, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R A Y M E L O, on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.